Walter Benjamin's seminal essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Its Technological Reproducibility, brilliantly dealt with photography and its context and the innovation of cinema, thereby not only marking a new stage in the history of the image, but describing fundamental challenges to its nature. My work comes, of course, in the wake of this awesome project. I want to focus it on what I see as a major innovation in the form of the image, the production of an image that moves. And along with this perceptual change, a transformation in the way images are presented. Reveals. The moving image projected on a screen or appearing on a monitor or even skidding across the pages of a flipping thumb book does not truly adhere to these material surfaces in the way that a drawing does to its paper or a painting does to canvas. The moving image seems to float across such, such surfaces and never simply to merge with them. In this sense, it is a virtual image. The moving image exists at any moment as a flow of potential images, which develops in the course or develops its course of time. It the modern image is not caught, not limited to the one-to-one -one relation of mirroring reality with a picture, but rather it depends on a complex triangulation among a technological device, a perceiving subject and a virtual image, which doesn't expire, does not aspire to capturing a pre-existing model, but rather delights in the play within this triangle, which may or may not refer to a pre-existing world. The moving image entered the 19th century under peculiar circumstances. First, it stressed a dialectical relation between still and moving images. The educational discourse surrounding philosophical toys asserted the primacy of the still image and described the illusion motion, putting that in quotes, as the product of this rapid presentation of still images before a eye which gets described as defective. Why, in fact, should this ability to see a moving image be, why shouldn't it be viewed as a faculty of our vision, as an ability rather than a defect? I am claiming the technological image fascinates partly because of its constant impulse to exceed what is already known and already grasped in favor of new possibilities. If by means of technological devices, we actually see moving images produced optically. I maintain that this marks a revolutionary moment in the history of the image, one whose radical epistemic nature we may not have yet fully appreciated or explored. These devices do not represent motion. They produce it. I want to indicate the possibilities inherent in the virtual should be opened up rather than shut down. As theorists and practitioners, as historians and as envisioners of the future, these possibilities need to be kept in play. Do you think that um, contemporary forms of illusion present in nowadays visual entertainment and mainly as an extension of our visual culture, call out for a modern strategy to educate the public to avoid the mistakes of il illusion of knowledge versus real knowledge. If we have a dichotomy between illusion and disillusionment, you know, which is dispelling illusion and revealing what is concealed by the illusion, on the one hand, I certainly endorse that 
that that model of how we think and how we progress and how we uh, work things out. However, I'm also suspicious of it because it is it takes the form in, in many ways, and I'm just thinking this now, so it's maybe um, not developed. In many ways, I would say the model that underlies my thinking here is trying to get away from dualities of like truth and illusion and introduce more, at least a triple uh, understanding where we are aware of how illusions are produced, you know, and not just simply therefore throw them in the garbage, but think what do they reveal not just what did they conceal, 